Good morning, guys. It's Thursday, September the 28th. We are leaving good old Ari Michael. I did have to pick up one of those uh, universal 42 frame motors, also known as the pancake motor. Some guys call them the pancake motor. We are going to go replace it on a 1992 or 93 train condenser it's one of those square body trains the refrigerant lines are way up at the top the uh contactor the contactor and capacitor access is in a little square box about this big by like this big and you gotta take some other screws off and lean it back to get to it I don't know what train was thinking when they built this unit. Obviously, they weren't thinking. But anyway, uh, you know, I recommended a replacement, but what it is is that the radio station that I do work for, this is one of their properties that they rent. And, uh, I mean, the little unit's in good shape. I mean, don't get me wrong, for a 1992 or three, it, it looks really good. And the fan motor went out, and they just want to go ahead and put a fan motor on it. So... I guess that's what we'll do. And I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride, so we'll see y'all when we get there. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're headed back over to R.E. Michael to exchange that motor because come to find out that mo that unit does call for a 48 frame. I guess I looked at it wrong. I could have sworn it called for a 42, but I called my train man up in Texarkana just to verify that it did call for a 48 frame, and he... Uh, he verified it, that it does definitely call for a 48 frame motor. So we're headed back over to Ori Michael. I'm gonna give him this little 42 frame back and pick up a 48 frame. But uh, we were talking about OEM motors versus universal motors the other day. Well, you know, like I said, that, that Linux unit y'all saw from yesterday's video was, a, or the other, the day before yesterday's video, whenever it was, was a really nice unit was in great shape and not to say that this little train's not in good shape because for a 93 model it's in really good shape but it's a 93 you know i'm not, and we don't have a train store here we have an american standard store and oh lord that place is a joke but so i'm not going to order an oem motor for a 1993 unit and there's no telling how much money a train would want for that damn thing anyway so I'm headed over to Ari Michael, like I said, to swap out the universal 42 frame for a universal 48 frame. And I'll try to get you guys some shots when we get back. I didn't get no shots of me removing the old motor, but I'll definitely try to get some shots of, you know, doing the new one. I'm not going to go uh, as in depth as I did on the other video the other day. So anyway, all right, guys, we'll catch you when we get back over to the job site. All right, guys, I have our new motor. There's the little train unit. Here's the top. This one takes an eighth horsepower, but nobody had a straight eighth, and none of the multi-horsepowers uh, cover eighth, but this one has the same amp draw as the old one. One amp, exactly one amp, same as the old motor, so that'll work fine. So I'm gonna unbox it, get it mounted, and then throw it on the unit. All right, guys, I got my new motor on there. Spins real free. Look at this control cabinet. I mean, that's it. That's all the room they give you. Look at the damn compressor. It's got the big uh, snowball in it. Damn compressor is almost as big as the whole unit. I had to cut the shaft on that fan motor, or I was going to touch the compressor. I'm gonna lay it on top, wire it up and start it. All right guys, the little train lives, a little two ton. There's the information in case you're interested. Pulling heat, I got the reversing leads tucked up underneath that conduit. They're not sticking out the grill. And she's running good all right guys well we got the little train back up and running it's all good to go 
Now I'm headed to a restaurant that I take care of. They got uh, two ream systems, ream Arood, the big square ones with what I call the big back door on the back. And they got one in particular. They call all they they call every other week or so and say, "Hey, it's freezing up." Every time I go, it's it's never frozen, and I can't find anything wrong with it. Filters are clean, the evaporator's clean, refrigerant pressures are good. It, it's never freezing up. They don't have TXVs on them; they got pistons, so. I can't never find them freezing up and I ask them, did y'all see ice on the pipe? No, it just it just wasn't cooling. So they think it's freezing up. But what, what's happening is that the building doesn't have enough air. It's only got two five tons and they got a big old kitchen and everything. And when they start firing up them grills and all that and they get all that all them people in there, it gets hot. But I'll go run over there and recheck everything again and you know collect a service call off of it if that's what they want all right guys thanks for watching we'll see y'all on the next one